Hey, everybody. It's Shane and the kitty cat, Kyle Kinane. Our little soup cracker, whatever. Hey, this is a special announcement for this week's episode. You can catch us, Kyle and I, along with our good friend Amy Miller, on After Midnight, hosted by Taylor Tomlinson, this Tuesday, right after Stephen Colbert on CBS, the Central Broadcasting System. Yeah. Network television. It's a thing. I thought it was Columbia Broadcasting. I could be wrong. After midnight on channel whatever. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a thing. <laughs> Morning DJ vibes <laughs> with this mic. <laughs> oh, Today we talking about church. <laughs> Today we talking about church. <laughs> Praise him, Kyle. <laughs> Let him use your Charlene. <laughs> hey, everybody, open up your hearts and your wallets and give us 10% of tax deductible income. That's right. <laughs> we here at the Church of No Accounting for Taste got one thing to say, and that is give us your goddamn money. Sorry, Lord, I had to say it for this tax shelter. <laughs> and Brother Kyle, tell him, tell him what we're talking about today. Oh, my God. It's Bono. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Do you realize, do you realize any pair of six dollars, mm-hmm. any pair of six dollars safety glasses from Home Depot turns you into Bono? <laughs> Everybody, please be sure to swing by the communal soup gathering after today's service. Uh, Cody Cat will be serving up something delicious as per usual. Ooh, yeah, heard he's making toast points this week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Toast points for Jesus. <laughs> this is the least successful. Least financially responsible podcast <laughs> on the internet. Everybody, <laughs> please get ready to ride the no accounting for taste chain straight to the promised land of 54 minutes of inconsolable shame, 54 minutes of guaranteed to be irritated, Kyle, and 54 minutes of Charlene's remarkable laugh. Everybody, here we go. This is no accounting for taste, the only taste. An only podcast endorsed by the Vatican. Praise Here we go. Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. No accounting for Jesus. taste. Oh. No accounting ah. for taste. Oh. <laughs> if you believe, subscribe to the Patreon. Have faith. It will come. It will. <laughs> it will arrive. Best uh, in- we'll be right back. And also, vote no on Prop 47 in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Embryos are babies. <laughs> Kyle, you're good with words. You know that, man? I think the gym is dumb. R- did Rachel walk was, in the room? Of course I've eaten up Baconator. Man, if you ain't doing CrossFit, you can get cross You're shuffle. right. A long burger's not the worst idea I've ever heard. That's your sitcom right there as a, as a, as a Mr. Fix-It-All who just can't fix his heart. We will not be defending Atlantic City. No accounting for taste. If it's something that somebody loves, let's try and celebrate it instead of uh, shitting on it. This Valentine's Day, move on from those sketchy gas station erection pills and treat yourself to a supplement you could actually trust. No prescription needed. Horny goat weed. What's? I only want to be one of those words. I don't need Spanish fly, just this Mountain Dew. That's right. <laughs> Go to usejoymode.com and get 20% off with code NAFT at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping. Oh my goodness. With code NAFT at usejoymode.com. Be at your best when love is in the air with Joy Mode. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, everybody, little, little jelly bean baby today. A man, we have a guest jelly bean speaker. Babies. We have a guest speaker today. A man who has been through trials. A man who was mm-hmm. in the darkest spot he could have possibly ever mm-hmm. been. But he mm. found faith, and now he is a coach of champions, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause for my dear friend, Coach Kyle. Let him hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Embryos are babies. Women are objects. Believe in yourself. Shoot for the stars. If you fail, you'll uh, you'll fail, and I don't tolerate that. Neither is Je- neither is Jesus. <laughs> There's only success in hell. It's only two things. <laughs>
You want you know what heaven really is? Winning. That's what heaven is. Heaven's winning. Losing's hell. You want to go to hell? You want to let down God? Go ahead and lose. I don't know if that is scripture or Vince (laughs) Lombardi. I couldn't shift in. I was being Jesus-y. I couldn't shift in to Coach Kyle. (laughs) Hello, everybody. This is no accounting for taste. This week we're talking about church. (sighs) Best intro we've ever done. Oh, I don't know. There's some other pretty good ones. Nah. No? (laughs) Nah. It's the best one. Charlene, you're muted again, and you're talking. Oh, yeah. Please find <laughs> you got to yeah. stay on the YouTube now. We have to record your video as well. Cause... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The... <laughs> I don't so even many know of our uh, uh, listeners from our congregation have been coming to my shows and telling me how much they love you. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You're like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. You're like, they love you. They're out if of we their lose minds. you, if you if you stopped laughing, it would be even more financially disastrous for the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> the only well, po- think- the only podcast working in debt. <laughs> <laughs> Shane's buying a new microphone every two weeks. I need a new laptop. <laughs> <coughs> Kyle's hiring publicists. Sponsors, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in a deficit for comedy in the last year. Sponsors, uh, sponsors that uh, sell crap don't like it when you announce that they're selling crap, so they bow, they bow out. Oh. They didn't bow out. I stopped. Anyway, what's up? What's up, buddy? <laughs> it's good to be here. Peace, I miss hey, you guys. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> And also with and you. also there you also go. With you. It's a yeah, it's a, a, a whole the holy improv. In case you were wondering if I was yes a and also scamper. with you. <laughs> it's my Christian improv group called Yes and Also with You. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's you know, funny. You know what? Uh, you know what helps? You know what helps make improv better is if you invite everybody to go on stage. <laughs> Oh God! Somebody's got. All right. It. Somebody's got to know how Guys, to do a scene. All right. Thank you for tuning in today. We are talking about church. Okay, good. I did hit record. That's how <laughs> <laughs> you got me panicked. Yeah. Um, I. All right. I grew up Catholic. Kyle, Catholic. Yep. Charlene, Catholic. Yep. Yep. So we all had a pretty similar experience. How far down the path of Catholicism did you two make it? Oh, good question. I went to Catholic school. Oh. Through high school? No, in elementary school. Um You were a you were a jumper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh picture will be on the Patreon, everybody, once we get it. Oh a, yeah, I probably what is do a, have what one. What is a jumper? It it is you know like overalls, it's that top yeah. part of the overalls. That's a jumper. But a skirt on the bottom. It's also a fifty fifty bet on whether or not he'll actually do it. That's a jumper too. But, I, in, but, right. but then in England, right, right. a jumper is like a... A sweater. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but I... Uh, <laughs> so I was an altar girl, I guess. And uh, they still called them altar boys, even though some of us were girls. But uh, And when I got my period... So the patriarchy I, was still the patriarchy? <laughs> <laughs> it still is in the, alive and well in the Catholic Church. Uh <laughs> But uh, when I got my altar period, boy, Charlene, altar boy. <laughs> when, when I got my period, I wasn't allowed to do it anymore because I was unclean, and that is when I was Jesus. like, "This is some bullshit." Right. So were you just I like made blood it to, of Christ? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, church. So I've, I made it to like maybe twelve or thirteen. I've and then read, you were out. I've like, reddened my sheets, Father. I must resign <laughs> from assisting you in praising the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> get fucked. Everything about Catholicism can get 100% fucked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yep. Yeah. I like that it's the new edge thing now is that the kids are becoming Catholic. Like people are becoming Catholic now. And I think that's just, I think it's the pendulum swing of how, what can you do to confuse people? And you've, mm, na- yeah, you've like nailed it. Just you've nailed it with a that A syndrome one. of like, Internet yeah. youth, like having yeah. it the whole, yeah. We got to freak yeah. out the generation older than this. Hey, I know. Let's be Catholic. You got me. The the people that harbored pedophiles, 
I all the music. Hey, do what you're doing. Weird art. I like it. Movies I don't get. Fine. Vaping. It's dumb, but go for it. Catholicism. I have a few things to say. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a. I think it is one of the few institutions that claims to have done more good than bad. But then when you look at the scoreboard, it is insane that it's like. What, what like how far it's Harlem Globetrotters versus the Washington Generals on how much bad they have done. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. they've gotten one. I think the Globetrotters have won like or lost like three times in the existence of this. And well, I think the the church is kind of the same way. They're just fucking. But not, also to to go not to dwell on it, Charlene. So you just had to tell the church your personal business to excuse yourself from. It's funny because I I don't even remember how how it came out that I was unclean and not allowed to do it anymore. I guess they just always said it. And then you just told them once you had it, which is crazy to me. Yes. Um, Cause that's none your business, but no. I mean, the church was attached oh. to the school I went to. And I mean, the nuns like hit us with rulers and stuff. So, you know, yeah. it was like old school Catholic. That's, so far. so they probably so maybe I would venture to guess mm. that a nun figured you had 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 that happen finally, and then they told the church. Yeah, I, I don't. I, 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 I like, apparently have blocked it out. Yeah, I. Well, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Once I was taking a timed math test in Catholic school, and I had to go to the bathroom, and. They wouldn't let me until I finished my math test, but I couldn't really think about the math test because I had to go to the bathroom. And so I peed my pants. So the nun made me pee my pants in class and then stood me up in front of everybody. And then I got hit with a ruler for peeing during the test. And then I got sent to the office to go look in the lost and found to see if there were any more jumpers that I could wear. And there weren't. So I got to wear a pee skirt the whole day. It's going to be wild when hell is filled with all of the fo- Catholic followers. <laughs> Just a bunch Jesus. of like, oh. <laughs> Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Fuck So that. I wasn't a big fan from the get. No, I could imagine not. Uh, yeah. I didn't have, I mean, not, not to focus on Catholicism because church is a broader it topic. And well, that, we're doing we, our experience. This is the part yeah, where we're talking about but our we all have. Yeah, yeah, we don't have anything outside of, I just did Sunday school, but it was enough I mean, between that and just the concept of it, like, as an adult where you know, like, you're telling a fairy tale to a kid, well, if you do this thing that's bad, you'll, you know, you'll go to hell. And it's just a thing you can say as an adult, whereas a kid learning about the idea, like, oh, you know how you're only alive for a certain amount of time, but then forever you'll be burning like forever <laughs> if you, like, say, God damn it, or uh, touch your body in a way that's not right, or like, that will fuck with a child so much if yeah, they're imagine if you have an imagination and you're like, well, that's real. You're telling me this is real. Yeah. I have to believe that now this is the body and blood of Christ, and here's this set of rules, and here's all this other ridiculous. Also, shit. Also, there's no boogie monster, but this is real. These, oh, co- these two, yeah. these yeah. two like things you can't see, like, but are like, scared of. Which is you don't realize that that idea of God needs to fall into the category of Santa Claus of like. You'll figure it out. Yeah. And some people don't. Some people like don't grow up and realize like, oh yeah, it's not real. Or you go through your formidable years being terrified of this I uh, you know, this idea of hell. Anyway, that's just me. I was I, I, I did I got confirmed and then I think I still was trying to go to church just by myself because my parents weren't going. Cause they're like, mm-hmm. We went already, so now it's your turn to go to church. <laughs> you, you got we you already do it for the family <laughs> yeah it's like it's like it was like a graduate degree like no we already did it already but now you gotta go it's like no i thought yeah. we all went and so we wound up going i kind of did the same thing like i was still curious after yeah not that i wanted to be in church but i was like i went back to it a little bit oh I, yeah i wasn't yeah. curious i just thought that uh, if i didn't go that i was gonna go to hell and this was all the way up through Past eighth grade. And then even my parents were like the laziest. They're like, well, they have a Saturday evening mass. 
Like, well, church is about sacrifice, but we don't want to go. We don't want to get up early on Sunday. So we'll go, we'll go to like the 5.30 Saturday evening mass and we'll go to the sit-down Pizza Hut afterwards. And so you had to use sit-down Pizza Hut to get us to go to church. Sit-down Pizza Hut. Pretty great. I, I like, I, we talked about it. I love the sandwiches. It, the ta- it's a tavern. It's like a, basically a, a very, model effort. It very tavern. much so is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hence our proclivity for great bars. Yeah. What do you <laughs> think of church? I got to go to sit-down Pizza Hut. <laughs> uh, stand up sit yeah, down yeah, church yeah. just sit down pizza hut kneel, <laughs> kneel for jesus sit down for a family size pan pizza <laughs> we never got rewarded for going to church but every single week my mom said you're going to church every week until you learn how to behave in church so it was like a punishment and um, we didn't stop going until my dad died I believe you're rewarded with acceptance into the kingdom of heaven. You're right. Yeah. You're right. We uh, that's that's not a reward, please. <laughs> and also, you we know, pretty much, so you know who was the one that needed you go to church once your dad died. You're like, we're out. <laughs> we just looked at each other and we're like, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, that kind of. I remember that was a few things like um, we when my folks got divorced because I got uh, I had. I never got confirmed. I got, uh, uh, really? you know, you're, got a clean you're bill fucked. Out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but we missed it. Uh, but because my folks got divorced before, so that stuff was coming up. But yeah, then they they were like kind of like, you know, divorce is not allowed. Blah blah blah. And then I was like, this fucking community is not a community. Like I was like, fuck these people. Like yeah, fuck everyone. Yeah. And then there would be times where they like we miss you at church. Just because your parents got divorced, like there were people would say things like that, and I'd be like, "Well, fuck! You don't get to use my tragedy, and you're not being there as a community as a challenge for me to like subscribe into your faith more." Like it, it was fucking. Yeah, and I was a pretty I, angry kid at that point. So, but like, I also still feel like I was right. And also, There's something to be said for rage. Well, yeah, and also, yeah. who deemed you the purveyor of guilt on behalf of Christ? Yeah. Oh, you don't feel guilty enough for not going to church? I better, as a good Catholic, make you feel yeah. bad for not going. Fucking burn in hell, literally burn in hell. That you think it's yeah. your job to shame somebody else for also, not I following hope you get them. taxed soon. I hope you get taxed. 1,000% <laughs> tax the goddamn churches. Although, yeah, you hope you open that up, then you're opening up the well, that's the whole thing. Their political influence is that's why they shouldn't have political influence because they're not taxed. If you are taxing them, and then it's like, well, then go ahead and donate to whatever political point. campaign. So it's a, I think, without I'm speaking out of knowing or not knowing, but might be a little bit of a catch twenty two if you do start opening their influence up. Also, might have uh, might have better schools and roads. Uh, like you know, like if tax you just billionaires, funded, tax if you just tax. If you just property tax Catholic churches. Yeah. You might get the you stuff, so you might get the stuff you're praying for. You might actually get the things you're praying for <laughs> yeah. if you tax the churches. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, uh, and also, do you know, think about St. Patrick's is one of the most famous like cathedrals in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And it's in the middle of New York. Right. That's like a hundred million dollar lot, at least, just sitting mm-hmm. there. Tax mm-hmm. that. You don't, you don't want, you want to, you want to take care of homeless people? Wash the feet of the poor? Yeah. Fucking uh, right there. That yeah, alone yeah. would keep open 10 shelters in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like, and you wouldn't have to shut down beds in the summer. Right. I fi- know, like, yeah. I find it ironic. These businesses that stay closed on Sundays in the name of the Lord aren't just feeding homeless people for free. Yeah. yeah. So you're, yeah. you're, in the name of the Lord, you're saving a, a day's worth of wages for your business. Wages. But you sure, yeah. Where's the Christian part where you're taking care of the uh, community? <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Fuck em. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Maybe they're donating in somewhere. I, I, I don't know. But I, yeah, church. I remember going to like Lutheran church with my friend, and they were just everybody's just like dressed normal. And like, wait a minute, th- you're letting a lady on the stage. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> why, is she, why is she telling me? 
that God's great. Also, <laughs> wait, they're married? Fucking nah. This guy's got to be closeted and be touching kids for me to believe that he is connected <laughs> with God. Hey, where's the part? That hey, altar where's the part? boy is an altar girl and she's 18, yeah. well past her aging. Hey, where's the part where this guy who's not allowed to have sex but is allowed to hear me talk about beating off because it's a sin. Where do I go? Where do I go in a secret little room and tell this uh un unmarried single man that I've spiritual uh, in, in, voyeur inappropriate things. Like, yeah. Yeah. Where where's that part? Oh, it's not here? Weird. What a weird why does everybody look happy to be here? This isn't church. <laughs> you know what is uh I found this as an interesting fact. Did you know? Um I can't remember where I heard it, but the reason priests and nuns can't get married is completely financial. Like, it was like, there's not like a, it's not scripture. It's like, they were just like, well, if these people have kids and we have thousands and thousands of people, we have to pay them a living wage that can Mm -hmm. support a family. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, it's just cheap labor. Like, really, it's. Did you know that the reason why Catholics don't eat fish on Sundays during or Fridays during Lent has nothing to do with the religion either? And it was a the financial. Reason we, the reason we do eat fish, you, you, like where we did, you don't eat. Yes, don't. yes, don't I'm eat sorry. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was financial to spur the Italian yeah, it was, fish industry. Yeah, really. God. That is that was the biggest betrayal of like. Being a kid, like we're going to McDonald's on Friday. All right, McDonald's for, fish for a fillet of fish. We're like, God damn it, this fucking sucks. Like, yep. Why is there yep. cheese on it? Also, there better I be know. cheese on it. Uh, there's always <laughs> also, I'm not eating it without cheese on it. The only yeah. time, I'm like, there better be, <laughs> some, fish there better be some cheese so on my fish. <laughs> so gross. This is what I like to call a little surf and turf turf. <laughs> like, if you want me to eat fish, God, there better be cheese on it. I'm still getting dairy one way. I'm still usurping we'll your little we'll call this the broccoli thing. approach to everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smother it and cover it, Jeebus. That was, uh, did, did you guys go to a midnight mass? You ever do that one for Christmas? Yeah. I, oh, um, yeah. What a clown that show was that was. The one uh, thing. I would go with my mom still because mm. like she she went back to it because I think she just felt like it was the right time in her life. Yeah. She started going back to mass. Can you guys hear this vacuum cleaner outside the hallway or no? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay, good. But I will still I still would take her to mass on on Christmas Eve when I was home. That was like the thing I would go. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of I don't. I mean, church sucks. But I, I guess that kind of ritualism is still there for me in some way. Like I still feel it. Like I'm not a. It was like part really, of it familiar. was part of Christmas more than it was a part of Jesus. Yeah, I think so, for me. And then, um, and like if I, uh, I will still light a candle for her if I go by a, a church and yeah, I think of it. But that's it. Like so, like I guess there's like some of it's like, it's all for her though. Like it's all for her memory. I well, have no. And for, and for, it's for you. I have a lot of like. I like I, in my mind. I just think like fuck church when I'm in church. Yeah, like, I yeah. still like churches. At least Catholic churches themselves are beautiful architecture. We would yeah. go it, midnight mass for us. It was like I'm never gonna do like a tough mutter race, and I'm not gonna do CrossFit. But midnight mass was the closest. Like I am shit faced. I've eaten five pounds of ham. And now mm-hmm. at midnight, you want me to stay awake mm-hmm. and deal with this? This is my endurance. Like, this is my marathon. This is my endurance race, is trying not to pass out, barf, fart, make, try and make my sister laugh or my mm-hmm. dad. Mm-hmm. But that was it. Like, the snoring that would pop up at midnight mass. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Everybody's in there just drunk. Yeah. People you haven't seen in years. Like, okay, Tommy. Yeah. Say, yeah. peace be with you. Yeah. Oh, O'Malley's is open till four tonight. Okay. Hey, yeah. we, we could see. I'm taking I'm taking a big gulp of the wine. I'm going to take a big gulp of the wine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. and also still dipping out after communion. Padre. <laughs> like. Hey, Padre, leave the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dipping but big if you got the there too late for midnight mass, you wouldn't even get a seat. No, yeah. it was. That was everybody yeah. coming. End of the year, 
Because all need, the part timers come back yeah, in. I need to get yeah. washed. I need to be yeah, washed. That was off. always like the priest opening line and always a pastor's opening line. Mm-hmm. It's like, a little more full tonight. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking well, hack. Yeah. Man, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> could spice it up on the Sundays. Stop phoning it in between holidays, you know? Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> the only church I need is Cowboy Stadium on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can go into the next section about how church can be whatever you want church to be. That's mm-hmm. true, we can. And we'll be right back after this ad from our sponsor, Joel Olstein, America's favorite pastor. <laughs> Whether you're looking to get lucky or spice up those intimate moments with your partner, Joy Mode's sexual performance booster is an all-natural and science-backed solution to every man's greatest fear. Releasing the love too soon gross. This Valentine's Day, move on from sketchy gas station erection pills and treat yourself to a supplement you can actually trust. No prescription needed. Date night will never be the same when you go to usejoymode.com for 20% off with code NAFT. That's 20% off and free shipping with code NAFT at usejoymode.com. Boy, Valentine's Day, that's the most romantic of all the days uh, outside of Easter. You definitely want to make sure you find those eggs. You know what I mean. <laughs> Who needs flowers and chocolates when you can give them the best give of all? It's boners. Joy Mode's sexual performance booster is like a pre-workout, but for sex. Not only is this the only supplement you'll need in the bedroom, it also supports blood vessel support, cardiovascular and heart health, athletic performance, blood pressure, and that classic general erection function. Small enough to fit in your wallet and take with you on the go, it's a perfect date night companion. Use joymode.com and get 20% off with code NAFT at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping with code NAFT at usejoymode.com. Be at your best when love is in the air with Joy Mode. <laughs> Let me lay hands on you, Charlene. <laughs> what a creepy that, thing uh, to say. What get a, that permanent no. scowl off your face. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're back. He is risen for the second second. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um. This is the part called the good and the bad. Uh, I feel like we've um, we know where we're going to be leaning towards on this, but um, uh, well, you got to take the term of church and like like stop letting it be abused by just the Jesus freaks. Mm-hmm. I think yes. church. I think church is a little bit of. I would say I was because I was thinking about it. Did you ever hear this joke though? Man who farts in church sits in his own pew. It's a good one. It's like the old. <laughs> it was the old like. It was the. It was the old like run of Confucius jokes. Mm-hmm. Man with yeah. hole in pocket feels cocky all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's hard not to do the. Now accent. we're doing Eastern <laughs> philosophy. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to do the <laughs> accent when you do the bad Confucius jokes. But uh, yeah, Ooh. I mean, church is like. I don't know. I would say early days of starting stand up without being too sentimental about it like you'd go to clubs or like oh this is where you know this is where people i looked up to performed and i have a reverence for this place and the people that do this thing and i think that could be any kind of you know anywhere could be that you could call that church well what it is is community yeah like that's like the most valuable thing hence things like communion uh but that's the most valuable valuable thing I ever got and still see mm-hmm. in church. But that's what I see in our community of comedy. Like, you know, really like I've said this before, but like the worst part of COVID was everybody just lost community, no matter which one you were a part of. Yeah. Um, so like when they were talking about like reopening churches, I was like, well, if you're opening them up, everything needs to be opened. Like, I don't, I like, this is not, that thing is no more valuable than the thing I like to spend my time doing. Like, I, I don't believe you. And I, and my, and by the way, my, the one, the community I spend my time in pays taxes. So like, yeah, it, the, the church part. Yeah. That, that, okay. This is people's 
belief system that at one point in time that it was it was community it was also like the center of commerce it was the center of like you got employment through the church so like again yes i'm reiterating the definition of community back at you yeah but but um so like for me i think like that is the one thing i will give church is that it helps people find other people uh, like and i i think it's a, you know i don't I think other than that, I really have almost nothing good to say about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 I really don't. But like, I do believe like finding good people who share a similar faith or ideal with you is always valuable. I just don't like the thing that's claiming to execute it or lead it. Well, I would say too, that like, at least with the religious idea of church, <clears throat> if you're going theoretically, you're going to church because you want to be a good person or a better person. So you're meeting somebody, somebody under the guise that they're also trying to be better or continuing to live a good life in the eyes of the Lord. Whereas if you meet somebody like, Oh, I met this guy at my gym. Like they could still be a piece of shit just cause they want to lift weights or I met this guy, you know, like those are still might be scumbags. Church doesn't discredit that at all. But at least the idea yeah. of church is like, oh, I'm trying to live a more uh, yeah, like, a worthy life and good being. I mean, a lot of most church, religious churches, it's about being kind to your fellow human being. Man, and yeah. So you're meeting somebody with that premise versus, uh, you know, comedy is like, you like to tell jokes at a bar? I like to tell jokes at a bar. Well, yeah, that's also horrible people within comedy. There's horrible people in churches. Of course. Yeah. But it might be an easier, like, bar I mean, I barrier that's broken is a little down. better. Yeah, the barrier that's broken I mean, a down. bar's message are, are you tired of being good and responsible? Yeah. Come here. This is the spot. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if the burden of church is too much, how about Saturday night? Yeah. But then you have people that can move in there and realize, oh, it's easy to take advantage of these suckers that just, you know, you could griff the churchgoers probably pretty easily. Yeah. Just yeah. look. I mean, yeah. As I said that, oh, but people are trying to be better. And then it's just every pastor with private jets because they, they need them because they need to expedite their service. Yeah, they got to get their message yeah. across. I can't fly commercial. These people, these people need to praise Jesus. And they need my help, yeah. but I got to get there without TSA holding me up. <laughs> All right. I got an idea. Favorite oh. crooked preacher story. Ooh, I don't. Anyone? I don't have a personal. I mean, well, we had a we had a priest that I think. That, well, if you want, well, I mean, like if, it can be a national news story. It doesn't have to be personal to you. But no, like, no. This is this is the church I went to, and give it's everybody's loves their rumors in the church. Uh, isn't that what the Bible is mostly? Is just rumors. It's a whole. It's yeah, a it's whole, word of mouth. It's a whole book of retold gossip. Yeah, <clears throat> it was. It was a book that was written by word of mouth. Yeah. When people were even dumber than they are today. Well, like I, like I, I had said it before. It's like uh, stories retold by wine drunk, inbred wine drunk hillbillies, <laughs> just to just to get just to <laughs> elevate their stance with each retelling. Ror, Rory Scovel's, yeah, Rory Scovel's new special has a whole great bit about like. Peter's letter to the Episcopalians. Like, you ever think they're just like, why does he keep writing us letters? We're not writing him back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Rory Scovel. Basically. Yeah, basically the Bible was written by the wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Uh, yeah. Nobody can answer that. For, that for, well, we're not trying to tear down Catholicism. But no, our, our priest, think, apparently, one, apparently one of our priests had AIDS. Uh, but nobody could prove that, but it was the eighties and that's what you saw a guy getting skinny every week. And so people decided it was AIDS. But then I, when my friend told me like, no, they got him. Uh, he was like a member of like a sex dungeon in the city. And then they, they bumped him. I think they got bumped. He got, he got bumped out of my friend's church over to mine. My church, I think was the one before they totally kicked you out of town. And I think, I guess they, they caught him. Which again, no kink shaming when there's no God, but you're you're gonna sit up there and tell me that, you know, the the ultimate hypocrisy of uh, just a. I, I, also, you're you're a gay dude when it's not accepted. If your family's devout Catholic and you're gay and you don't know how to like 
deal with that. Yeah. What better way than to be like, oh, I don't have a girlfriend because uh, I'm my boyfriend is the Lord. And then, yeah. oh, well, that's that's fine. That, that makes more sense. God damn it. Ugh. Except it doesn't it at really, all. It <laughs> really, it's all, it's fucked from every angle. It really I, is. Um, uh, my, one of the things I really uh, like, this was pretty recent. There was some contractor, like a plumber, mm-hmm. doing something in Joel Olstein's offices. And he found like hundreds of thousands of dollars in the wall recently. <laughs> And they were like, hey, what's this about? You know, like. Yeah. And uh, and they were like, oh, there was like, they, the, I can't remember exactly what it was, but like, there was an accounting, like a paper trail that was pretty close, a pretty close figure to what this money was. Yeah. And they were like, oh, we don't know. Like, it was like, you're a liar. Like, just. Mm-hmm. You, if you get caught doing that, you should be taxed and not churched. <clears throat> you don't anyway. have to be I, caught I, doing anything. You should be taxed. I just can't believe some of these, the size of some of these people have, like, uh, like their of their con- like Ted Haggard. Remember him? I mean, the, all the he names was, sound familiar. Ted Haggard was the guy at the mega church in like Denver who got yeah. caught like doing meth and having sex with gay prostitutes, and they like. It was such a crazy thing. They asked him to leave the like part of his like settlement for leaving this church or whatever was that he had to leave the state of Colorado. Like it was fucking insane. And like when you hear him talk, you're like, this is like you're not the hero. You're like a bad guy yeah. too, who got caught up with the other bad guys. Yeah. But the amount of delusion that's coming out of you and lying of like, I don't know if it's delusion is the right word, but like just sycophantic narcissism that that you have for yourself, not sycophantic is not the right word, but like just Mm -hmm. ego narcissism and just psychosis. Because when he's talking and he's, they're asking about these things, he's smiling. Like there's no shame attached to it. Yeah. It's there, bananas. You got to be so far up your own ass to think that not only are you a conduit for the Lord, but because you are, you deserve terrestrial wealth. You know the thing that Jesus just valued so much, being yeah. the son of God. I better, I'm the son of God. Yeah, you should probably have a lot of fancy things. But if, I mean, we know that the grift is obvious, but other people... They they feel better giving their money to them because they think the money's going straight to Jesus. And old people maybe at the end are going that that they sleep better at night thinking they're somehow fighting the devil. Yeah. And these slick dudes with their Rolls Royces, they need that. They need that. You gotta fight. You gotta fight flashy with flashy. The devil's a flashy guy. You gotta fly, you can't fight him and be meager. You gotta be slick. I don't know what I'm talking about. Neither do these I, guys. No, I, they don't. But my uncle was a priest. Yeah. Did I tell you that? No. Yeah, my, my mom's brother. Uh, he was mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. He would like swear and stuff. Oh, and yeah. Like, Some of them yeah. were just drunks. I like Yeah, he I, was just like, he'd have a couple of drinks with my mom and stuff. And then mm-hmm. he'd be like, I think he became fairly disenchanted with it after like later on in his life. Yeah. But um, I liked him. We saw American History X together. <laughs> That was an interesting moment. I like the I like drunk priests that are have to perform exorcisms. That are just like, oh god, <laughs> goddamn demons are back. They're just I was spewing like that last night. Yeah, yeah. yeah just <laughs> you know, it's gonna help that. Maybe just a, a warm sprite. Have you tried a warm <laughs> sprite? Nope it's a, it's a demon. All right, okay. We just gotta try warm sprite before we in. Uh, <laughs> Start doing all the Latin shit. We just got to throw some uh, some room temperature seven hey, up there. Spiritus there you go. Ante. Uh, <laughs> uh, fuck this goddamn language. I never got it right. <laughs> just, like, I'll be honest. We're making it up half the time up there because I know you don't know yeah. Latin. So what am I remembering? Google Mooga. Google Mooga. It's uh, it's turtle time. Nina Wait, Pinta, Santa Maria. <laughs> Bienvenidos. Uh, bienvenidos. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Carbonara. Los Carlos años felicidad. felicidad. <laughs> 
But sure, okay, so we're just, we're we're all hung up on Catholicism because we we're raised that way, and it scarred us. But there's some people that were like, yeah, I just was, uh, you know, Protestant, I was a uh, Lutheran, and they just it was fine, and they didn't they weren't painted this cruel, vindictive version of God or uh, the hell is a punishment, and they were just taught that hey, this is a nice way to be kind to your neighbors. And uh, yeah, the Mormons are weird, but they'll shovel your driveway when it snows or something. I could use some Mormon <laughs> neighbors. <clears throat> they'll do stuff like that. <clears throat> the Jehovah's Witnesses, I don't know. They're doing their whole thing. Um, but these are all Christian sects. I mean, there's still <clears throat> people go to yeah. temple. People go to all kinds of places. Where, where outside of comedy, are you like a, you're a gym guy, Shane? Do you have like reverence when you go to, when you're going to box or anything? A little bit of like, this is a place for me to focus on this one thing and not be distracted by the woes of the world. I do feel that. And it, it, it serves in a functional like way. And I get endorphins. Yeah. You know, from it, but I don't like, I've never done a bunch of clap push ups and then saw the eyes of the Virgin Mary in a barbell. You know, like I don't like, they do say that's why the singing, the singing and chanting is because you can hyperventilate and that causes this feeling of elation. And that's what adds to this belief <clears throat> that you're like, oh, and then I felt like I was rising and this. It's like, yeah, you're just didn't have enough oxygen in your brain. I do like the the <laughs> sightings of, of biblical things in Christ in like in Cheetos they, uh, and stuff. Oh, yeah, I like I think I like the spectacle. I don't actually like them, but like. One of my favorite Simpsons jokes of all time is somebody sees Christ and he goes, he goes, I have to go. I have to appear in, on a tortilla in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> we, my friend Brian and I, we rode our bikes to North Park Mall and we were riding home. And there's this, there was this guy in Addison that he was, he was one of these, like just one of these kooks that like, oh, he's running for president. No chance. <laughs> just a weird, he's like, his big idea was to have pink and blue money. I don't remember why, but I'm like, that's just a board game. I mean, that feels gendered, right? I, I, but it was something, it was in regards to like, only this money pays bills and this money exists in frivolity. It was, I don't know what his reason was. Just a kook whose job was making like, I think novelty pens and he had a storefront, but he also saw Jesus in the wood paneling of one of the doors in his office. <laughs> and so we're riding back. We're like that's the guy that is. Let's go. Let's go look at Jesus. This, this is a, this is my friend who I was still like going to church after junior high with. I'm like we should go see Jesus. And this guy basically like kidnapped us. Like he like he kept talking to the point where we couldn't interject and say we had to leave. And he's like, and then and then this is why. And just kept telling us his visions for the world. And for why he should be president. And that's why Jesus appeared in the door. And it's not like we were stuck there, but he gave us no opportunity to like, Hey, we got to go. And also we're children. Like it was just, and here's yeah, another yeah, thing. Yeah. And let me show you this and hold on a second. And here's like for two hours, we were late to get home for dinner. My parents were like, we were going to call the cops. You were supposed to be home an hour and a half ago. Where the fuck? Like, we had to go see Jesus. We were at church. Yeah, yeah, bull fucking shit. You were at church. Well, it's also like, hey, you know you know how you told us like that Jesus is the best guy? Well, we went to go see him in a door, and it turned out some goblin was the guy who kept us in his office forever. <laughs> so it's not that it's your fault, but this whole, oh, we better go witness Christ in the real world. And it's just these ghouls that exist like... Just, there is a line to this chain of events that we have. Yeah. So like yeah. I was just trying to be more I was just trying to be more godly. That's why I missed dinner. <laughs> oh man. We have a ton of voicemails. I am not this surprised. Was a popular I topic. Was it? I don't know if this guy called in, but I got a DM mm -hmm. and he goes, uh, for the church message I posted, and he goes, I have cerebral palsy, so anytime I went to church when I was little, people would put their hands on me and try to heal, <laughs> heal me. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Back so, off. Uh, the, shout out to that guy. That was like maybe my favorite DM I've oh ever gotten my in my God. fucking life. Uh, here it is. Uh, his name is Red Mabu. Uh, Mabu is what his handle is. Uh, church people wanted to heal me by laying hands on me. It was weird, but fuck. I thought, it, what, what else do I have to lose? Be, be well. <laughs> Oh my gosh. God, yeah. Oh man. Uh you have to lose a day going untouched by strangers. That's what you have to lose. 
<laughs> All right, everybody. Um, we're going to go to the voicemails. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor, the movie Spotlight. Spotlight, the uncovering of the Catholic Church's pedophile ring, starring Mark Ruffalo, Michael <laughs> Keaton, and the mean girl from Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel McAdams, that's her name. <laughs> no, I liked your description. Let everybody else find it out. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh. Shit. As our Sunday sermon comes to a close. Shane Torres, I'm fired today, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. We always like to hear from our partitioners. Yeah, from the, our, fa- <clears throat> our family members. From the congregation. But I like to think of you as partners in this church. And just for seventeen ninety nine, <laughs> you can get a tote bag filled with a crucifix a bottle of holy water from my very own tap, and and that's it. Funds are low. (laughs) Here's something else. Sister Act 2 is my favorite movie. (laughs) (laughs) Back in the (laughs) hand. Whoopi Goldberg, I say whoopi. I can't have Whoopi, though, because I'm a priest, even though I talk like a <laughs> <sighs> It's time for us to go to maybe the, what do we go? Oh. Jesus on the main line. Let's pass the basket mm. for the donation of our followers. Oh, my God. <clears throat> no. Okay. <laughs> everybody, this we're gonna hear the fucking calls. Let's hear it from the Cody Cats, everybody. This is the litter box. Ain't no Eucharist in here. <laughs> Church. So the first collection letter I ever received was from my church. Growing up as a child, I'm like in maybe middle school, probably about ten, eleven, maybe twelve. And they had us all fill out these pledge cards of how much money we were gonna tithe over the year. At the beginning of the year, I'm like, set a goal. How much money do you want to give us? And I'm a child, and I'm being optimistic, and I love Jesus at this point. So I'm like, well, here, how about, uh, how about have, you know, a tenth of the money I assume I'm going to make. I assume I'm going to make all kinds of money because I'm a child and I'm an idiot. And so uh, I didn't have that much money to give them. I didn't give them that much money. And then after however many months, I get a letter it's like, hey, remember when you said you were going to give us all this money? You've not done that. Here's how much you've given versus how much you said you'd give. And you can see the discrepancy. So maybe uh, maybe make with more of the money, uh, which I probably didn't. I think the moral is it prepared me for life in a way mm. that uh, maybe I didn't even realize it was going to do. So uh, yay, church. Right. <laughs> what a Columbia warehouse approach yeah. to getting money off a kit. Man. Fuck them. For only three cents right now, you won't go to hell. But also, it'll be $12 a month every month for the rest of your life to make sure. <laughs> but you'll get a collective soul CD. <laughs> oh my God. What a fucking awful. That sounds pretty. That sounds pretty Catholic. Without guessing, that sounds pretty Catholic. It does sound. Re- <laughs> oh, I have one more thing to say about uh, churchgoers. Mm-hmm. Fucking, you coming in on Sunday tip. after church? Mm-hmm. Put some fucking money down. Yeah, tip. Yeah, that was. They would say <laughs> shit like, "We gave it to the church." Yeah, we lost. Yeah, like, we already oh, gave our one tithing. guy got one guy I worked with got a reborn birth certificate paid yep. instead of a tip. Yep. That's, I never put that together, and everybody talks about how, like, I having not worked in a restaurant, that the after-church crowd is the worst. worst. <laughs> the worst. Yeah. Really? More and tithing. they leave the biggest mess. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What Fuck. is the... <sighs> I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, like, there's no shortage of hypocrisy. With yeah the religious, but religion. yeah the the no tipping. I tithe to Jesus. You should too. Yeah, yeah. Or it's a shame you're like even, you shouldn't even be working on Sunday. Well, then why are you here? Give me a day off. It's those fake dollar bills that when you mm. open it, it's actually like let me tell you about Jesus. 
pamphlet that but they look I, like a real dollar bill until you open it. Uh, yeah, I remember I, uh, seeing those. I saw had saw more than one coworker walk out into the parking lot and be like, "Unload on people." Good, yeah. very yeah. much so. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 God, fucking, I get. I I I I have a actual physical reaction in my yeah. body to it right now. Thinking yeah. about it. And that's going, now we're dipping into like the, we should do that for a topic, the <clears throat> tipping culture. Oh, boy. Just add. Yeah, that'll be, that'll. Just add yeah. the amount. Just add the amount. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's Airline the... travel too. Let's add it to the list. Okay. Yeah. Tipping culture. Yeah. Here's the next All one. Right. What's up, Shane? What's up, Kyle? What's up, Shardog? But personally, I'm not a fan of church or the concept of organized religion. I think it's been used to fund the walls of the rich off the backs of the impoverished. But in the spirit of the show, if someone feels like a better person for going to a building for a placebo, then more power to them. Tax the church. Shout out to Buster. <laughs> uh, look, guys. <laughs> that's yeah, my man. dude. Yeah. Uh, great call. That is the essence man. of the show. If you go, if you got up early to go and you feel better afterwards, more good on you. Yeah, he nailed it. He nailed it. And, I think. Yeah, and and I also, sorry, we've been dogging the Catholic Church. Their charities do help people. I know some friends of like some people have benefited from the charities there. Just saying, some of them are actually in the communities helping the people of the community. That does exist, not the nation. All right. Here's the next one. Oh. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Charlene. Anthony in Oklahoma. Subject this week, church. You know, I understand for a lot of people, church was the place where one person decided that they were personally appointed by God to be the judge of their sins. When sin is between you and God, they have no business being in your sin. Or church can be in place like my church where you put feet to your faith. Do you need help with your rent? We're going to offer more than thoughts and prayers. Does your kid need medication? Call us. We will help you get it. Did your junkie daughter lose custody of her kids? And now you got to go pick up your grandkids, but the cops won't let you unless you have car seats. I personally delivered two car seats to that woman. And these people were not members of our church. Church can also be a place where you can kind of witness a miracle. I saw one. I saw a guy go in for full immersion baptism. He went in with a full head of hair. Came out flip bald and his toupee floated away on the surface of the water. I'm not sure that guy ever came back. So, my client, church can kind of be a crapshoot, too. Oklahoma out. <laughs> that call rules. Man, tell, That's awesome. Man, tell us what it. church that is. That sounds like what church Just is supposed to be. Oki. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, that Shout guy out cool. to Buster. That that yeah. does also the idea of the hair floating away and everybody being like, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no false pretense. God don't like, like false Christ pretenses. Floating down the river in a bathroom, <laughs> your hair is <laughs> down the left road to Bethlehem. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's a good. That guy was awesome, we, and that makes sense. And nice to hear a positive story about churches that are out there doing that. <laughs> take care of people kind of thing. So, so yeah. good deal. Especially in Oklahoma, where things are a little dicey. Yes. Tornado Alley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll say the cat. Oh. finally have a topic I can speak on. First off, like Shane, I'm a Cowtown boy. Second, I'm a minister trained at the seminary near the Mexican Mall. Shane will know what I'm talking about. I do know. I love church. <laughs> I just hate that the American church has become more about power and, quote, winning than true discipleship. I still hold to what Jesus taught us in Matthew, that I'm supposed to love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, strength, and I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself. Jesus literally said, that's it. Everything else is secondary. We're supposed to care for our neighbor, and that means anybody and everybody, despite what they believe, what they've done, or where they're from. All right, sermon over. Can't wait to hear y'all's take. Nothing you say will offend me. And as always, it'll probably make me nearly pee myself laughing. Can't wait to hear dirt nap. Shane, you're special with special too. Meow, meow. 
All right. Yeah. I did not think we would have so many believers in our listenership. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Also, man, love thy neighbor as you I love yourself. Yeah. That's got to be rough for anybody living next to a stand-up. Well, I hate myself, so fuck you too, buddy. <laughs> How's it best to go uh, masturbate, Bill? <laughs> Love myself. Uh, no, I like, I like that. I know exactly the seminary <laughs> he went to. Sem- so the seminary Next to be to the Mexican mall, which used to just be the uh, town center mall, which was like the bad mall, and now it's like the best mall with the coolest shit. What makes it a Mexican mall? Every business is Latino focused, and the cinema is Latino, like. Perfect. Like it's Spanish language, yeah. All right. So it's like Oppenheimer in Spanish. So there's like a bunch of Mexican cowboys <laughs> in in there. You could it's definitely get a quinceanera dress there. <laughs> yeah, that kind of shit. Yeah, and, and all, like uh, uh, the pinatas. Yeah, like and the and the uh, the food court at the mall was like just bad fast food, like mm. like a Dairy Queen with an even lesser menu. <laughs> uh, but now, like, I don't know what it's like. I haven't been in there in years, but it's a. Uh, it's still there, man. That mall kicked ass, like, in a lot of ways. I like the Mexican mall. I like this idea of a Mexican mall. <clears throat> yeah, well, if we go to Fort Worth together, we can go to the Mexican mall and swing by the seminary. All right. So, but, that, but a seminary to become a minister, I thought seminaries were just for priests. I think, or, oh. I think it's, I'm not sure. But it, this was not uh, a Catholic focus. Um, it wasn't yeah. part of the church. It was, like, I know, but... Because my, my mom wanted to rent out one of the rooms in the house to seminary students. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I was like, you're going to hate that. And I was like, I was like, you you won't like you like you're not going to like young students like being in there. And she goes, no, I think I can do it. We have two bathrooms. And I was like, you can just like let them use the the kitchen and stuff. She goes, oh, no. Well, I mean, they have to schedule a time. But we'll figure it out. Well, yeah, I can't imagine seminary students getting that loose, but who knows? Maybe they're like, no, well, I'm, a, I'm about mom, to not fuck ever again. But my brother, I just had this idea of my brothers walking in and being like, who the fuck are you in my mom's house? Oh, like, well, yeah. I'll beat your geek ass with your book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you uh, want me, Jesus? I'll help you. I'll help you meet him early. <laughs> <laughs> you can- but they were a good funky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, that's a, one of the, that was on... Um, old Crowley Road, I think maybe yeah, which turned him yeah Crowley Road, and like right before it was um the place we would go buy beer in high school was the shady ass gross uh shady ass uh convenience store where we'd pull in, and they'd sell us cigarettes and beer. It's awesome. I want to know if seminary students are actually the craziest because they know they're about to lock it all down. Like, like if you think you, if you know you're going to give your life to the Lord, mm-hmm. like they'd have a rum springer, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It like basically it's a bachelor party for everything, for every sin right. you could have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's some church kids I knew, yeah. and that is the most incestuous place on a hundred in high school. Yeah. They are in theater. Yeah. Like, and, uh, and ROTC. What's Rot- Rotsy? What's Rotsy? It's like the junior army, basically. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. ROTC. Yeah. TC, yeah. yeah. Which stands for, what, what does that stand for? R- no idea. Rifle? I don't know. Recruitment of the corpse. Uh, that makes sense. Is that? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was, but yeah. All right, let's, go, let's listen to another one. Okie dokie. Positive vibes. Great call. Great hey, call. Kyle, Shane, Charlene, and Buster. I'm calling about church. Personally, not a fan. Uh, Raised Catholic. Haven't been religious for a while. Um, I do have a favorite story, personal story, related to church. That unfortunately happened before I can recall. It was only told to me by my mom. Um, But she tells it well, so I do appreciate that. It was about my christening or baptism. And according to her, she was carrying me in my fancy little god dress uh, to the car for my christening. And before she could get me in my car seat, I shit everywhere. And uh, she emphasizes everywhere. <laughs> um, uh, just, she had to bring me inside, obviously change me. 
change my clothes, give me a bath, change her clothes. And uh, the level of disbelief and suspicion with which she continues to tell this story, uh, I'm 44 now, and she still can't believe that such a tiny little thing, I was about a month old, I guess, uh, who only consumed milk could expel that (laughs) much of anything from a tiny little body. And uh, so that is um, her continued disbelief. And she also will say that I knew in, you know, her very, like, suspicious, kind of just contemptuous voice. She'll say, you knew. You knew where we were going and you knew what you did. <laughs> <laughs> I do take Man. pride in that because uh, maybe I did. Maybe uh, my rebellious little self was just not down with having my little baby been a dog, um, you know, being a jerk. Yeah. Like a, a direct response to a threat is what it sounds like to me. Your, your skunk <laughs> mechanism engaged. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great call, too. This is a – maybe we should shift to a think- tax-free religious podcast. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I, mean, yeah. I am an ordained minister through the internet. Uh, did you, oh, did you have to marry somebody? Yeah, yeah. Two people. My friend – Or two couples. My uh, my buddy wouldn't get his kids baptized, and he grew up Catholic. And his best defense was like holding his newborn child, just looking at his mom and dad, like, "No, Tommy's going to hell. Tommy's going to hell. Tell this baby, this baby's going to hell. Tell me to my face, my baby's. Look at look at. No, this is your grandson. Tell me he's going to hell. Can you do it? Can you tell me he's going to hell? You can't. Oh, it's almost like it's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for him. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Way to have a baby at your mom, too. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Look at my little demon. Look at this little demon. Uh, oh, man. But uh, that's, we probably have time for <clears throat> one more before we think, get to Cody. I think. Oh, before. Okay. I was going to say, we know what man. that one more is going to be. Yeah. I mean, I know Can what I, the one more is going to be because that's a before special we, treat. Yeah. Okay. Before we get to it. Mm-hmm. Kyle, do you have people coming up to you at your shows asking about Cody? Because I've get, it's happening a Some lot. Some people are like they're just very excited about the soup reviews, and, and, and <laughs> as we all are excited for Cody's journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we I, have people that are leaving messages about Cody, and there's another Cody that calls in, and he calls himself not Soup Cody. <laughs> this is getting, <laughs> this is getting deep. I'm a, I'm, <laughs> man, man. Well, well, I know what we we have to use these voicemails for something. Uh, I think, I think, I think part of I this mean, pa- I, we part might of this be able Patreon, to do all Cody episode. Yeah, part of the Patreon, oh which is totally real and going to happen, should yeah, be yeah. should be what soup should Cody try next, and we Venmo him like twenty bucks for a soup. Oh, that's I a good idea. Try a soup. And it rec- what if our Patreon is solely to get him on the greatest soup journey of his, that of has his, ever been? Of well, and we're working. I mean, we are working within a limited. I mean, we might have to send him some soup, right? Because he's just stuck out in Utah. I don't know God, how many a soup sponsors. Uh, I mean, how much? I have a guy. We'll get a get him you, on board. You got a soup he's guy? A chef. He, I got. I do have a soup guy. We'll talk about it. All this. right, let's go. Okay. Okay. Nobody has ever said I think, that's so funny. <laughs> I have an inventory. He's, his company is they build, make soups from scratch, like gourmet soups. And then mm. they would like, you could deliver them and pick them up. So it's like. Yeah, we got some during the pandemic. Yeah. Oh. But this, that's oh. my real good. He owns, yeah, he has a new restaurant. All right. Too. Well, let's, nice. now, now I'm excited. Let's listen to this calm. I, let's. T- we're but just if we don't go have s- a cracker, man, we, go, we don't have a soup guy. That's all. That's how I was raised. Yeah, like, we're, we're just going to go straight to Cody. I'm so. not trying to put a frame on this house without a roof. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, hello, everybody. It's hey. the soup man. Yeah. Um, um, I, oh, shit, this is starting off bad. Um, I have to collect my thoughts. <laughs> I just woke up. Uh, Pozole is the boss. <laughs> I just woke God up. Pozole. And there. It. Pozole, it's got like big corn in it, like really big corn. I don't, I don't know what that, how to say it any other way, but the corn is big and (laughs) so is the flavor. (laughs) (laughs) Stop on in to the Mexican part of Flavortown because, oh man, 
it's got like pork and stuff in it. And Ciudad it's, de it's Sabor. Delicious. It's like the modern <laughs> art version of a burrito. It's dope as hell. Um, also, <sighs> it's hard to find. Really fucking hard to find. Um, there's a place called La Autentica. Um, and it's pretty good. They have it like more often, but there's a they, most places do it on the weekend. Is what I'm hearing. My buddy Angel from work is saying, go on the weekends. There's a place called Los Machetes and La Fandita, and uh, I, I tried La Fandita too, and it was oh my god, delicious. Um, you gotta try it with a quesadilla. Uh, shout out La Bandita on the weekends. Get yourself some pozole. And uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this all correctly. All right. Great. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Cody Cat. Uh, he unlocked pozole in a quesadilla. That's your tomato soup with grilled cheese. Yeah. I never even Mexican thought about Mexican combo. It. Yeah. You stumbled into a classic, Cody. Yeah. Jeez. Good for you, dude. Everything this guy touches is gold. <laughs> and also, it is a it, for going from no soup. I mean, we're only at the beginning of March, and my man's already on pozole. I don't know if he like does it. Does pozole have the tripe in it? Is that where you're getting real weird into the barely edible parts of the creatures? No. Let's see. I Let think pozole up. might. If I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. I, I don't want to ruin Cody's adventurous spirit by telling him what he's eating in there. Those aren't yeah. those aren't spaghettios, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but pozole, ooh yeah, man. No, it says it's typically just chicken or pork. Okay. What are the what are the, you get tortilla soup? What are the typical Mexican soups you get? You get a you get tortilla soup. Like you get a, a, tortilla a pozole. Like a, there's also, there's always like a seafood stew. You know, like it's kind of different. Calde- from like, Calderon, right? So Menudo, you know. Or Menudo, like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I I like that you just assumed we know remember that you're in American Fork, Utah, and went straight to the names of the places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to remind everybody, this is an extended. Next time one yeah. of us is at Wise Guys, we can probably like. I mean, I think this is still a stretch away from Wise Guys, but but yeah, uh, probably. But good for you, and okay, so. I'm going to guess Angel, not to assume, probably of a, a, a Latino gentleman. You're taking his word for it. And I wonder why it's only... Angel. Angel, Angel, Angel yeah. Taking you to the, the uh, Ciudad de Sabor, right? Is that Flavor Town? I think I know the most Spanish out of all of us here. <laughs> I mean uh, Flavor City. But flavor yeah. City. No, Charlene, you know, you, know, you know 100% Spanish? You know all of it? No. Okay. Well, we both know more than Shane. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> I want to go. I want to go to the spice town. <laughs> that's and and then he's got three spots down there. That yeah. he's. I wonder why it's only the weekends. I wonder if people just don't eat soup during the week, or if it's just easier to. Like, it takes so long to make, you only make one batch of it for the weekends? I wonder why. Can I be honest? I bet sometimes the soup is... Uh, everything from the week. Oh, yeah. all the chicken bones and everything. Yeah, kinda. yeah that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Ooh. That makes me... That yeah. makes it even more enticing. Like, you got to yeah. be patient for yeah. a nice warm yeah. cup of soup. I like it. There is something about um a meal that has been made from, like, the minimal, like... The scrap or whatever you want yeah. to call it, like mm-hmm. just the bare bones, that is really satisfying. And it's also, yeah, it and it's also better. The, yeah, and it's also we're using all the things. Which that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, I made a better thing with less. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like Ugh. a poor church as opposed to one of these mega things. Right. Yeah, you're yeah. not getting real. But, you're not getting real Jesus at a mega church. You're getting no. no I, don't think, I want you the are, one with snakes. I've always said, if you're going to find, if you're going to find Jesus nowadays, be the snake one. I've just said it yesterday. Be the snake handling one. You want to be edgy with Christ? Hold some snakes. Mm-hmm. And they have to be poisonous. There's got to be these... like a TikTok video of that going viral. Yeah. Right? I want to like, like a 17-year-old oh, edgelords. Yeah. 
Are you not on cult talk? I am. I am not on any talks. Yeah. Listen out. I'm not on cult talk. (sighs) Talkless. Okay. Well, why don't we do our plugs and get out of here? I mean, yeah, Cody. Uh, Cody, Cody kind of dropped the ball. For us this no, week. He, he was uh, he was overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed yeah, he came with, in with a dirty spoon and shoved it in our mouth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. Fucking get to it, Cody. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we we make you a star, and you can't plug our dates. <laughs> we're plugging we're plugging Cody's restaurants now. We're saying you got to go to. Might have to strain our soup a little if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. When's this out? This is Everybody out next week. Can find- Where are you at? Shane, hit him with it. Ta-da. All right, everybody. You can catch me at ShaneIsAComedian.com. That's my website. Shane Torres across all social media platforms. Upcoming dates. Here we go. You can catch me at The Port in Baltimore, March 21st through the 23rd. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at The Punchline, 29th and 30th of March. Milwaukee at The Laughing Tech. 4, 5, and 6th of April. San Francisco punchline after that. And right before all of that, me and the old kitty cat, my brother and soup, Kyle Kinane, are going to be on After Midnight with Taylor oh, yeah. Tomlinson. So come in. Maybe we'll wear some bibs or something fun. Yeah. So catch me there. Catch the pod. Check out the new special, uh, Blue Eyed Mexican. It's doing okay. And uh, yeah, so please share it, watch it. Thank you guys for listening. <clears throat> We should we should go out for soup. We should all go out for soup when we're out when we're in LA. I think that's all soup. Idea. All soup diet. I'm there for four days. All soup. I'm there for four days. <laughs> <laughs> all soup. Uh, all soup all the time. Kyle Run, running and gunning. Uh, I yeah, am in. Tell the Cody cats where they can find. Let's it. see. Kansas City, Missouri at the Comedy Club of Kansas City this weekend. If this weekend is March 14th through 16th. Uh, and then the weekend after that, Calgary, British Columbia. I've said some things about you in the past, but I think they're letting me in this time. Fingers crossed. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll flood you with dates the more they come, come along. I'm, I'm working almost every weekend. Dirt Naps available for 10 bucks at 800 pound Gorilla Media, or you could click through it on my website. It'll be for free April 2nd on YouTube with advertisements just you know who understands comedic timing? The YouTube advertising algorithm. They know exactly when a funny part might be coming up, and they try to sell you a Chevy Volt right in the middle of it. So yeah. <laughs> I would like it if you paid 10 bucks for it and saw it, or if you got five friends and each paid 2 bucks, because you'd all get a copy of it. But if not, I understand. It'll be for free April 2nd for you to consume with capitalism injected into it. CalCanade.com. That's CalCanade.com. <laughs> Charlene, show him, Buster. <laughs> Where is he at? He is hiding under the blanket. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Char- <laughs> Charlene, what do you want to plug? Charlene produces the well, Tom you and can Fortune see show. Me, uh, <laughs> next week here on No Account for <laughs> <laughs> She's the best one. We love her to death. Uh, Again, everybody, call in with your suggested topics, 971-259-8302. We got some fun ones coming up. We can't thank you guys enough for listening. Uh, Until then, keep your soup spoons clean clean, and wrap your bibs around your neck because Big Daddy Kyle and Shaney Kitty Cat and Buster and Charlene are coming back next week with a whole new episode on Lies Your Mother Told You. All right, everybody. Goodbye for meow. <laughs> Peace be with you. <laughs> <laughs>